Antonio, Lewis Howes, Chelsea Cross. Ten seconds. Uh, I'm going to be there all three days. My wife's going to be there all three, three days. Robert Sislo is going to be there. The audience is going to be phenomenal. Folks, we're running out of tickets. Hey, welcome. Grant Cardone here in this week's book review. Every Tuesday, I do a book review with you to share with you a book I've either written or a book that I've read. Okay, in this case, I read The Sale of a Lifetime, How the Great Bubble Burst of 2017, this is very timely, through 2019, can make you rich, okay? I'm gonna be going over the book here in just a second. Every week, I do a book review. If you got a book that you want me to review, send your email, send your suggestion to um, Robert at GrantCardone.com. Robert at GrantCardone.com. Robert's coughing on the mic over there. I don't know if his mic's open or not, but Robert Sislo, go hey, ahead. How's it going? What's up, man? Yeah, you? you open? You open now? I'm open now. Damn, how'd you open up so fast? Fast. So Robert Sislo, the video genius, for all your advertising and branding needs is always available for you. You can email him at Robert, Robert at GrantCardone.com. By the way, if you've already gotten a 10X Growth Con ticket and you want to upgrade to VIP, okay, now would be the time to upgrade to the VIP, okay? The $10,000 tickets are sold out. The VIP are almost sold out. So if you're thinking about being uh, going on the yacht party, doing the yacht party, having, having access to the speakers after uh, between sessions, and you want to upgrade or you haven't bought your ticket yet, invest it in your ticket. It's not really, you're not buying groceries. You're investing in yourself. You're investing in a weekend. You're investing in connections. You're investing in the future. 10xgrowthcon.com. If you want to upgrade, you could also email robert at grantcardone.com. Robert at grantcardone.com. If you have a book that you'd like me to read and review, send that request to robert at Grant. Cardone.com. I have my ticket. I wear my ticket every day. Have you ever seen me without my ticket on? Never. Dude, Always I wear it every day, dog. You know, you need your ticket, Robert. Why don't you have your ticket on, man? You should be wearing your ticket. Okay, so today the stock market, yesterday the stock market went up again. The S&P 500, let me just give you some current information, because this book's about investing. Okay, and I read this book because I'm on this I'm on this thing right now. The S&P is at 2328. That's a high. That is an all-time high. The history of planet Earth. This is the S&P 500 is basically a standard and poor 500 largest companies um, in the Americans, okay, in the New York Stock Exchange. It's 2326. Uh, it, 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 it is at an all-time high. If you go out max years, the I don't know if you can see this, but basically it's going to be a chart. You're at the end of the world here. Uh, and I went to New York City this weekend and I said, hey, guys, met with Goldman, Morgan Stanley, Citibank, BlackRock, Stone. Met, huh? Blackstone. Um, who else do we meet with? Bank of America. Bank of America, U.S. Trust. Dude, you know what they all said? The S&P. Okay, the S&P 500 is gonna go from 2,300 to 2,700. It's gonna go up 400 more points this year. And I was like, whoa. Went to the next guy. We think it's going to 2,600. We think it's going to 25. We think it's going up. I walked away from that meeting saying, man, I tell you what, there's a lot of optimism in the world. A lot of people optimistic. A lot of optimism going on. You know, basically, the, the end is near when you hit exuberance. Okay, in investing, in any investing, just remember this, okay? The end is near when you get to exuberance. Exuberance is beyond optimism, okay? It's, it's beyond enthusiasm. Now, now we can't lose. We will win every game. There's no way it goes down again. That's exuberance, like, like total freaking, everybody wants to do the deal now. So we're probably not there, but we're definitely in a moment of optimism, okay? Can you grab my, the other book that I'm reading right now off my desk? It's, a, it's an orange book. Um, so, so this book by Harry Dent. Harry Dent, by the way, after the Roaring Twenties comes the Great Depression. After the Roaring Two Thousands came the Great Re Recession. We're now entering the winter season of the 80-year four-season economic cycle. 
Harry Dent talks about economic cycles as though they're seasons, okay? Now, this cat's not talking about, I'm also reading The Intelligent Investor right now by Benjamin Graham that Warren Beth Buffett said was the single most important book he's read in his life and the most important book ever written on, um, on investing, okay? So, now this Harry Dent dude, just so everybody that's watching knows, okay, this guy is, he thinks, to boil it all down, there's an economic winter coming of mass proportions that will be bigger than the bust of 2008, the real estate bust, okay? He's gonna talk in this book a lot about millennials, a lot about the baby boomer, and a lot about China. It's during the season that we'll clear the decks with a devastating crash and debilitating deflation. If you turn on CNBC today, okay? or if you go to the Wall Street Journal or Barron's Magazine, you're gonna see a lot of people talking about we're inflating, we're moving into an inflating, inflationary environment, which means interest rates are gonna slowly start creeping up. This book was written, see the date on the book? Uh, copyright, 2016. By the way, the person that gave me this, they have that circled. Why, they wanna know when that book was written. How relevant is it? He's predicting in 2017, how the great bubble burst of 2017-19 can make you rich. Now he's not saying it's bad that things go down. He's saying you want to be ready when things go down. Okay, he's written this book and since he's written this book, what he didn't know would happen, by the way, so you got to think when you're reading this book, did he know about Trump? No, he didn't plan Trump. So what will Trump do? Can Trump, can one individual, can one individual and the idea of borders, maybe taxing, or we, we, we bring all that money, we patriate all that money, bring all that money back from Apple and say, hey, you don't have to pay taxes on it, or we lower the tax burden in America to corporations and individuals. Harry Dent did not know when he was writing this book that one guy could come in and actually start changing things. In fact, there is one mention in the book that his uh, predictions of the future could be changed by one thing some major change in government, okay? So keep that in mind while you're reading the book. Don't just read a book and say, oh, he's right or he's wrong, but keep in mind, or what can you take from it? What can I take from it and how are things that have changed now uh, could affect this? By the way, this book was written back in, I think, originally, the original book was written 1964. So when I'm reading this book, I'm thinking about, how does that apply today? What does this have to do with right now? After the blustering bull market of 2009 to 2015, he wrote this in 2016, he's saying there was a blustering market in 2009 to 2015. Folks, we've had a 20%, 20% straight up in the stock market in the last six months. We are now preparing for a shakeout. So he, did, he missed that, he missed the 20%. We are now preparing for a shakeout more painful than anything we've seen before. We have eight years of unprecedented government stimulus and money creation to thanks for stretching this bubble beyond imagination and making the burst more painful than anything we've ever considered. Harry Dent, best-selling author of the Demogra Demographic Cliff, which I strongly advise everybody to read. The Demographic glyph, Cliff, which by the way, when you have 108 million people moving through the economic system in America, they're called baby boomers. And another 80 million coming in behind them called millennials. You definitely want to follow their activity because people, and he says this in the book, and by the way, I completely agree and I've always said this, economies are made of people, not stocks, not companies, not, not Wall Street, not predictions, not economists. Economies are made of people, okay? They're made of people. The looming correction is a once in a life, I'm sorry, a once in a century opportunity to gather immense wealth. The current debt bubble is the biggest since 1929 and much worse than 2008. Now, when I was talking to all these guys, all these smart guys on Wall Street, nobody talked about debt, nobody. In fact, I had one lady tell me the debt in China, by the way, is like five times the debt in America. Let me just give you the exact number. Chinese de debt, Chinese debt. Man, it's such an exciting time, right? 
compare it to U.S. What is it? Yeah, but compared to their GDP, right? Uh, yeah, how, how much is it? $28 trillion. America's debt is $20 trillion. The difference is our economy, the American economy, represents 24% of the entire world population. China represents, I think China's the second biggest. Uh, China's total debt to GDP, okay, gross domestic product is 270%, okay, as opposed to the U.S., uh, which is um, no, no. China, China's debt, debt credit, uh, debt to GDP stands at well over 300 percent. All right, and the U.S. is about half of that. So, <clears throat> what's the point of all that? Okay, I love the book. Okay, I love the book. There's a there there. I actually love the book. I got to tell you. You know why I love the book? because the book puts you on warning. It puts me on high alert, okay? I operate best when I'm at high alert, okay? Now, what I didn't like about the book <clears throat> is throughout the book, he constantly talks about real estate as being something that's gonna get hammered. If you take, if you take, if you don't take the time to understand what real estate means, what equities mean, what debt means, what currencies are, what treasuries are, what bonds are, what fixed uh, investments are, what, what uh, private equity means. If you don't understand these terms, okay, you're gonna read this and say, real estate's a terrible investment. Grant Cardone's got a real estate show on every Monday, man. He says it's a good investment, okay? Well, chapter 23, Okay, and remember, when you read something, you gotta think with the data, right? It's gotta be true or not true for you. You don't need to re read a book just to agree with it, okay? And I wasn't reading this chapter on real estate so that I could agree or disagree. I want to learn. <coughs> I mean, there's a great chapter, the whole thing about the fall of great cities. Unbelievable content in there, I mean, to start thinking with, okay? With a lot of facts to support it, by the way. I'm trying to find chapter 23 right now, okay? Uh, chapter 23, profiting in business is chapter 22, 23. I'll get there in just a second, give me one second. Keep missing it. Uh, profiting in real estate. Now when he's talking about real estate, he says down here on page 314, in the last property crash, U.S. residential, I circled it here, real estate, tumbled 34%. Commercial real estate collapsed by 43%. Okay, now what is co commercial real estate? Apartment buildings would be under a, 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 a commercial. He was not talking about apartments here. Apartments did not collapse at 43%. Condos did, okay, developments did. Unfinished product did. Uh, office buildings did, okay? A lot of stuff that wasn't stable, income producing, and by the way, even though those values fell, if the income stayed up, okay? I didn't lose any property in 2009, nothing. I lost nothing. How can my values go down in 2009, which was a devastating collapse? How can my values go down and I keep getting a cash flow every month? As long as I'm getting a cash flow, and Harry doesn't talk about this because he probably doesn't own any real estate, while, while it's producing cash flows, you're not, by the way, he does, he bought a couple of houses. So exactly what he said he shouldn't buy, he went and bought. So it's kind of interesting that he would do that. He says on page 315, make no mistake about it, the fragile U.S. real estate market is now ripe for an even bigger fall. We're on the verge of a global real estate bubble bust. I'm reading this to you while I'm out every day buying real estate. Japan housing prices increased a whopping 160% between 1986 and 1991, compared with 127% in the U.S. If our retracement echoes the Japanese experience, we could see housing fall 49% from the 2014 price levels, okay? This guy talks even more negatively about the stock market, saying the stock market, which today is at 20,400 says that stock market could fall from 20,400 to 6,000, okay? So <clears throat> I would definitely get the book, 
What's your biggest takeaway from the book? Biggest takeaway from the book is, buddy, you need to know what you're doing, okay? You better be in it for the long haul. Invest in companies, okay? As you see, during the Great Depression, if you go back to the, like, if you're gonna read this book, and like, there's gonna be another freaking market cataclysm, there is. Like, I'm like, yeah, that, this is gonna happen. I know it's gonna happen, okay? Uh, look at some of these graphs here. I don't know if you can show this closer on the screen. Here's the ma massive deleveraging follows every debt bubble. There's no way anybody can convince me that we haven't had a monster debt bubble, okay? We have debt, which means we expanded our debt. We, we owed about $12 trillion, $12, uh, uh, tw trillion dollars, uh, eight years ago. It's $20 trillion today. Donald Trump is gonna go borrow, and this is one of the cognitions I had during this book. Oh, I know what Donald Trump's gonna do. Donald Trump's gonna go borrow another eight or 10 trillion. We're gonna go from 20 trillion to 30 trillion. We're gonna expand the debt even worse than it is right now. It's gonna pump activity into the system. And then maybe four years, five years, six years from now, okay, maybe we have some activity for four or five years. But sooner or later, dude, you gotta pay, you gotta pay this debt off. Okay, so if you look at on page 158, the book's worth just looking at that one graph. Total debt in 1933 was the highest. It was 300% of GDP, okay? Right now, it's, it, it, it's pushing above the 350 mark. Every time it's got over 300, we've had this big, almost downward uh, drop. Why, what happens when the market drops, boom. What happens is companies go bankrupt and they walk away from their debt. How do you clean up debt? Wars and walk away. What does Donald Trump do? He just walks through. Bankruptcy. Hey man, I claim bankruptcy, man. It didn't work, okay? I, re, I re basically sell off this junk, okay? It was just paper anyway. So what my big takeaway from the book was, man, just, you know, I write here on page 159, Trump will explode the debt in 2019. He didn't say this, Dent didn't say this. This is what I'm learning from as I, while I read the book. He says, just imagine if, if you'd be ready and waiting for the moment to invest in stocks or real estate or businesses, okay? The other suggestion he makes in this book is raise cash. This might be a great time where there's so much optimism to sell your company. He said, why not sell your company right now? I'm like, dang man, I never thought about that. Maybe I could sell my company, get a bunch of dough for it, okay? and sit on the sidelines and wait for what? Two things happen. I either miss this continued movement upward in the markets, okay, while I do what? While I wait for this collapse, if there's gonna be a collapse. If you think there's gonna be a collapse, hey look, we all know there's gonna be one, okay? It's happened in Greece, it's happened in Spain. I was saying two years ago when Spain was going upside down, we had our warning when Spain bust, uh, when Greece busted and Spain busted. We had our warning. They had their warning 15 years ago. We had our warning seven years ago. Debt's gone up, okay? Your jobs don't pay you more money. The country's in no better shape. How can one guy with orange hair possibly change the whole world? Okay, you got an aging demographic, a lot of debt in the marketplace. History, history, if you learn from it, history, um, history can teach you a lot about the future, okay? On page 171, sure the U.S. did well, but our demographic trends move sideways for decades to come. Now there's a really important part of this book. He does spend two chapters just on the demographics in America. What happens? In the 50s and 60s, there was millions of, 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 of my parents, right? My parents, millions and millions of them, 100 million to be exact, were having kids sending them to school, buying cars, and buying homes. Those people are getting ready to go do this. Die, okay? They're gonna be going to homes, right? So I, I, I start thinking what? From reading Harry Dent's book, man, I wanna start, I wanna start buying my apartment buildings. I need big square footage, a thousand square foot apartment buildings, not the little stuff thousand square foot apartment buildings and maybe I need to start thinking in terms of turning those one day in the future into healthcare facilities or retirement facilities or old age facilities or happy living environments. Uh -huh, you see? See, so I can read the book. I don't need to like, oh my God, the world's coming to an end. Let's go get food. Let's go get food, water, and bullets, right? 
Chapter 14, the single greatest economic force the world has ever seen. I dare you to read the book just to find out find out what that greatest economic force is. I'm going to leave that as a mystery for you to go figure out yourself. My name's Grant Cardone, and every Tuesday I do a book review. I love this book, okay? I love the book. Don't know that I agree with all of it, but I do love the book, and it did influence the way I'm going to make my investments. Most importantly, it's made me uh, acutely aware of the environment I am, okay? I'm going home tonight. I'm studying spending time reading. I already told my wife, hey baby, you know what? I need to pick up an extra hour of study every night. I got to figure out where we're going, what's going to happen. I want to be able to predict the future. And if I can't predict the future, I want to at least be ready for it so that I can go in next time and take advantage of it. Because I missed, probably like you, I missed the opportunity of my lifetime in 2009 because I didn't have the courage. I didn't have the courage because I didn't have the knowledge because I didn't pay the price, okay? Thanks for thanks for joining uh, uh, the book review, this week's book review. Every Tuesday I do one. If you want me to review a book, if you got a great book you've read and you want me to review it, you've heard something about it, send an email to Robert at grantcardone.com. We also, we, sh we should set up book review at grantcardone.com. We'll book review at grantcardone.com. Book review at grantcardone.com. Book review at grantcardone.com. Also, tonight at nine o'clock. At nine o'clock tonight. At nine o'clock tonight. You know what I'm gonna be doing at nine o'clock tonight? I'm gonna be giving a ticket away, okay? That's right. Those are, these are $2,250 tickets, okay? I'm going to be giving some away tonight. In fact, tonight, I'm going to give away a $10,000 ticket, okay? Included yacht, included dinner at my house, included you get to win an entry for a flight on 10X Airlines. Watch my Facebook feed tonight at 9 o'clock. Go to Grant Cardone Fan on Facebook. Grant Cardone Fan. It's my fan page, Grant Cardone Fan. At 9 o'clock tonight, I'm giving away a $10,000. We're sold out at this level. The only way you can get this ticket is to win one, okay? We're sold out on the $10,000 tickets. Premium VIP includes the yacht. It includes... Meeting all the speakers. Meeting all the speakers. It includes Talk dinner at my house, and it includes an win. entry... On the bird into 10X Airlines, okay? We're gonna put you on the bird. Nine o'clock tonight, go to Grant Cardone Fan on Facebook, hit notifications, you'll see me go live at nine o'clock. I'm gonna tell you what you have to do, and we're gonna give away a $10,000 ticket, okay? Have to have notifications turned on. You have to share when you get there tonight. I'm just telling you, first people that share are the ones that care. I know that, you know that. And the third thing you have to do is one other thing. You have to give me a piece of data about you and, and, and I'll, I'll put you in this, what is it called, sweepstakes mm -hmm. for a $10,000 ticket. Thank you for watching the book review today. Hey, you guys on, you guys, you guys, you guys on Instagram, okay? Don't, don't look for this on Instagram tonight. It's not gonna be on Instagram. It's gonna.